we're moving on out of chapter 3 today, and we just want to um, just seal some things by the Spirit, not trying to do anything without the Spirit of truth, because He is the teacher. The Spirit of Christ is the teacher. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said those things. He's the Christ. Hallelujah. The Spirit of truth then will take up His and show it unto us. So, Father, we thank you for the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of Christ, your Holy Spirit, your great grace. Thank you, Lord. All things, in all things we give you thanksgiving. Bless the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Bless these your people. Thank you for ears to hear, eyes to see by the Spirit, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we give thanks. Amen. Amen. So we want to look at Ruth 3, 16 through 18. I'll just read it and then we'll go back and review a few things and come forward. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me, for he said to me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Then said she, Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he has finished the thing this day. And Boaz, we see this powerful picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, this, this, it's just beautiful. And we see... The grace of God in operation with Ruth, bringing her from the land of Moab, which spoke strictly to death and flesh, carnality, however you want to say it, and brought her out of that to where she will be the wife of Boaz. Such a beautiful picture of us in this great journey of salvation. Glory to God. So, I, last time we came together, I asked you to note Ruth's response. Note her response to the question when she was asked who she was. I know some of your translations may bring that modern and make it like kind of chit-chat talk, but we need to hear this by the Holy Spirit. The mother-in-law asked her, who art thou? And I went over to 1 Samuel 17 and showed you how under the power of God, even after <clears throat> interacting with one-on-one -on -one with David, when he was in the battle, Saul couldn't recognize him. Because what? The power of God was on him. Now she's been sitting at the feet of Jesus, in the, in, uh, Boaz rather, in this posture of wet rest, which speaks to us of the same thing. When we sit at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ in rest and what we come forth with, glory to God. See, the word, Bo when Boaz is used here, the man, it means a noble man. It's not just anybody. We're talking about a type of the Lord. When she asked who, which was asked who she was, she replied, "What the the man had done to her." She told what the man had done to her. Glory to God. So we need to hear that. So it says, "What did she say?" She said, "These six measures of barley gave he me." Listen, six measures of barley. We went over that. You know, we kind of like introduced that. Wednesday, but we could spend teaching upon teaching upon teaching talking about these six measures. She really, that really brought her <clears throat> into fullness, family. Listen very carefully because she's already received a measure before, just like we have the earnest of the, the, the spirit. But there's so much more to come. If you can ever just get a people to get in this feast of, of tabernacles by the spirit, you see, there's so much more to come in this great harvest. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, these six measures gave him me. He told her, go not empty. Go not empty. We'll get to all that in just a minute. But I want to I see something. I want to show you something. We also went to John's Gospel, chapter 2. And we showed you how it said Jesus, the beginning of miracles with Jesus, was at a place called Cana. Now, I don't know if you paid attention to the reading, but it said it was the third day. You hear this? Go with John to his was on the third day, and Jesus is at this wedding, and they run out of wine. And his mother tells him, he tells his mother, you know, don't get me out of time. Just kind of <laughs> paraphrase, my time has not yet come. But look at the situation. It's the third day, a marriage is going on. The bridegroom himself <coughs> comes to, even though it's a, a wedding, not his, but he comes to a wedding. 
and there's no wine there. And what does he do? Look at what he does at this wedding. So we'll wake up and, and not just read a banner, but live, actually live in the spirit. He said, fill six water pots with what? Water. They did what he said. His mother said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. They did. When they are bearing the water pots to the governor, it changes. Somebody please give the Lord. See, when these measures get to Naomi, right. you understand what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a, a lot more than, <clears throat> than what it just looked like on the surface. I'm telling you, barley is a type of resurrection grain for sure. But when you carry this just like, I'll just use myself for example. Example, Bishop Paul, glory to the name of the Lord. God, my hap was to be at a meeting at a certain time when my former pastor, glory to God, Gary Garner, was teaching there. I didn't know him then with the intimacy before he passed, glory to God. But my former pastor was there. Now, I'll tell you what happened to me. When I <clears throat> was on the transfer, I was living in Texas. Mm -hmm. I had friends from Panama. They invited me to go to church with them. They went to another church. This particular Sunday, I went to uh, the, another church where Pastor Garner was because it was in the town I lived. They went to the town, it was a different town that they wanted me to go to church with. So I went in the town where I lived. My, just like Ruth, my hat. Now listen, what the world would call luck, mm -hmm. for us is grace. Amen. It's divine timing, everything. Yes. I heard this man preach Jesus Christ from Noah's ark. You hear this? Right. Yeah. Went to the old covenant, <clears throat> teaching Noah's ark, and could show us everything about Jesus Christ in it. And I'm like, what, Lord, look at this right here. You're talking about your spirit being at home. <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, dear friends, dear friends, you, you met friends, roll back with us one time, the text. Dear friends, I met in, in another location, and and, but listen, you can't always follow your friends. You got to Amen. go where the hat. You got to be where God has you where you, that means where you land by divine intervention. That's where you be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, what happened there? Out of that meeting and later on developing a relationship, Jesus gave me six measures. Y'all hear this? Got to hear me well. I'm, I'm testifying. Glory to God. See, he gave me my fullest measures. My measures. You see these steps right here? I told you this is not decoration. This is not decoration. How many do you see? Six of them. This comes right out of Paul's revelation. See this? Hallelujah. Thank God for a pastor who meant business with God and instead of trying to build up churches all over the country like other people have done, all he did was just, his church sat in a cow pasture up in Arkansas. You, you go outside and the parking lot ends and there's this fence line and there are cows over there. But you know what? People had come from all over. Down a dirt road. You hear what I'm saying? People that come from all of that's what your hat will do. God will draw you and place you where you need to be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, what did I come? What did I bring home? What did I bring home? What did I bring to like a picture of Ruth going to Naomi? What six, what, what measures did I bring home? I brought home these six measures, glory to God, because I received them from the Lord, glory to God. I didn't reject it when I heard it. I knew it was the truth of God, and it grew, we grew up in these scriptures. Amen. Get your bulletin and flip it over. You don't even have to flip the scriptures. Look at your bulletin. Turn it over on the back, and you can follow right along with me. You see these steps right here. This is not decoration. These are measures. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. These are our measures. Thank you, Jesus. Crucified with Christ. Measure one. Y'all see this? Look at your scriptures. Put your eyes on Romans 6, 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. See, if you really, if this, if you take the measure and realize the measure is really, if it's barley loaves, that's the bread of life. Somebody please hear God. You see that? It's the bread of 
life. My old man, that old Adamic nature, listen, all that stuff that came up out of Moab is crucified with Christ. You hear that right there? Glory to God. What? That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should what? Not serve sin. That's what Bishop Paul said, well, go lie, lie, and lie, about. That's not talking about you. That's not who you are. Glory to the name of the Lord. Well, you, you are not a sinner. You are king and priest unto God and Father because Jesus has seen to this. Glory to God. Galatians 2 and 20, listen to this. I am, those are the first words. I am. I am crucified with Christ. Now, here's something that will throw you. Nevertheless, I live. Listen, when you say I, I doesn't mean Carolyn. Right. I means Christ in me. You hear this right here? We got to get this in our heads and stop trying to act so like, like you're so religious and, and, and I don't know what you call that word like, you, like, like you're just so super religious and, and like you blaspheming and, and too holy to say what God told you to say. Somebody please your God. Bless his holy name. I am crucified with Christ because he said I am. That's why death can't hold you. You see that? <clears throat> Nevertheless, I live. Hear that? Yes. But you got to understand it in something. It's not I. And I'm not the one living. Right. Y'all hear this? Yes. The life, but Christ living in me. Yes. If, you see how much this would cut out if people would just read their mind? Right. That's why we put this on every bulletin so we don't catch it but one time. <laughs> you will take this with you. You hear this right here? You, will, you taking this out of here with you. Glory to God. And the life which I now live in the flesh, listen, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, what? And gave himself for me. So who, who's operating things around here? That's what I keep telling people. All y'all waiting on him to come? And you sitting up in churches? My question is this. Who is running things for you now? Amen. If you waiting on him. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Amen. All right. Galatians 6, 14. God forbid that I should glory... Saying in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me. You hear this? And I unto the world. Didn't he just tell us when we went over to John's Gospel 14 through 16? Listen, the world's not going to like you, so stop this affinity with it. Because if you're going to live for me, you, you, you can't do both of them. You see that? Right. Glory to God. Right. So that's, that's, a, that's a measure. The next measure. Died with Christ. Romans 6, 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ... We believe we shall also live with him. See, people want this, this, this living now is resurrection life power. Like Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You're not going to know him and the power of his resurrection if you're in flesh. You're not going to ever know that, you see. Colossians 3 and 3 says this. I like this verse right here. For ye are dead. Because some people think that Adam should be running things. That man has been crucified. Look, go back to the crucified measure and go and eat that first and grow up on that. Amen. Hallelujah. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. You, our life it should be the Christ coming through us. Amen. See that? You notice when people get up here and minister, they're actually a vessel, you can call it, or, or a vessel for Christ to come through. Mm -hmm. If somebody got up here in and of themselves, that, that would make you sick. That would irritate you. They'd be like, you, who? You know? It would be instantly recognized. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You don't believe it? Yes. Let somebody get up in self instead of letting the Christ come through. And I guarantee you, if you follow the Holy Spirit, you're going to know the difference. Mm -hmm. If you want to know the difference, praise God. So that's a measure. That's a, that's a measure. We've got two now. Bear it with him. <clears throat> These are measures I brought back. That because of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the grace of God. Hallelujah. Romans 6 and 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised from, up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Right. See, when you read these scriptures like this, you find the excuse has gone away. The excuse has absolutely gone away. It's not about what we are doing. It's what the Christ is doing through us. What we're allowing the Christ to do through us. Well, well, God needs me because he'll need you. You want to see some chairs start talking? 
Don't do what it says. You want to hear these stones up here on this wall start talking? Don't play with him like that because he's not, he doesn't need anybody. Thank God that we ought to be thanking him that for, for bringing us into the understanding that we can hear and know that it's him and want to be vessels used of him instead of acting like we're doing something. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a privilege. Glory to God. Got three measures now. Quicken together. This word quicken, I know that's not our modern language, but it means made alive together. Made alive together. See that? Some people uh, use that word quicken in another way. When people get to jerking around in church, they say it's spirit quicken. What was that? You was the spirit and I don't know. But I, I know what made alive under God is. You yeah. see that? Yeah. See that? Yeah. Ephesians 2 and 5. Even when we were dead in sins. Look at this. Somebody needs to know this. This is why I'm going back. We grew up on this, but this is why I'm going right back right here. See this? Even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. See this? By grace you're saved. See that? So why you got people paying for what they already have in Christ? Okay? Colossians 2.13, and you're being dead in your sins... And the uncircumcision of your flesh have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Now are you beginning to understand why people are so manipulated and controlled and they're fearful? You got people right now, uh, to show us where somebody wrote a question, is, is the rapture coming? They're scared. People are scared of things. If you don't know these scriptures right here, you will be afraid. See that? You either need to realize that God is the only power that we should be listening to. God's voice is the only voice that we should be listening to. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff vying for our attention. Because if you knew these scriptures like this, that you are forgiven all your trespasses, and then the howling doesn't have anything to hold over your head, and you just walk in the perfect law of liberty... Nobody can hold anything over your head. I told you, it sounded like a joke, but I'm telling you the truth. Maybe somebody dead owe you some money. I bet you ain't go over to the cemetery and try to wake them up and get it. I keep trying to, I say things like that that sound facetious, but people are getting duped when it comes to these holy and spiritual things. Listen, if you have been forgiven, <clears throat> listen. This didn't say a few. And somebody gonna come back and get you later on. This said all oh, trespasses. Somebody please hear God. And if you didn't understand this at first, underline all or just put it somewhere in your heart. All trespasses have been forgiven. So nobody can come collecting on you for, for something. Right. And making you feel guilty about sitting in their houses four or five times a week and they're not doing anything. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Or doing things just, just to be doing them instead of letting it flow out of the heart. That's why this stuff, listen, if you give, give, give out of your heart and you let the Lord orchestrate that, there's going to the benefit, it'll be multiplied. It'll be doing things you don't even know. You hear the difference in that? But if you got somebody just making you just do something and it's not coming out of the heart, that's not doing anything. That just has a, well, that's the effect of it, and that's it. When you obey God and went and did something, you just, just did one little thing, and, and you don't realize it, but it just grew and grew and grew. And God is the only one to get the glory from it. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So we've got four measures right there. Hear that? Five, raised in Christ. Ephesians 2 and 6. And hath raised us up together. See, you won't notice if you're down in, in, in Moab, if you're in the flesh, if your mindset is in the flesh and you're in carnal church, you don't know you've been raised up. You see that you think you think a flesh Jesus is coming on a cloud and, and going to rapture you up. He ain't caring about nobody else but yourself. You, what kind of God is that? What kind of love is that? You see that? See, and he had raised us up together and made us, live. I'm sorry, raised, and if ye then, read Colossians first, if ye then be risen with Christ, what? Seek those things which are above. Where? Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above. Well, if you're seeking those things which are above, don't you have to come into this kingdom that God has, God has so freely given us? Amen. Do, would you hang outside and say bye and bye? No. When the morning comes, what's morning? We waiting on this the day of the Lord. Amen. You see that? 
And then the, the next, the sixth one. Ephesians 2 and 6 says, and it raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I used to say all the time, that would knock depression out of you. <laughs> you hear this? You get a revelation of this. Where you seated? Where you seated? Together. In, in Christ, in heavenly places. Glory to the name of the Lord. See, this was bread of life. This ministry, foundational. Foundation of Christ built on it. Touch and is touching places we we will never see. This is what I'm saying. You don't want that temporary, that local stuff. We're talking about a, a spiritual kingdom. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. A spiritual kingdom. Doing things you have no idea of. Glory. And you don't need to have the idea of because what? Only the increase comes from who? The Father. Oh, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now I wanted us to see this. Six measures. And she said. These six measures of barley gave me, for he said, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. What happened? Listen, don't go empty to her. Naomi is a picture of the church. A picture of the church. Now, if you went back to chapter 1, remember chapter 1, you don't have to go back there to Ruth 1. What did Naomi say? I went out full, and the Lord had brought me home. How? Empty. Why then, calling me Naomi, seeing the Lord have testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. Listen, let me show you something right here. Don't say the Lord, that the Lord is doing something. Don't. This is where that's got to stop. You understand what I'm saying? Where we are, don't, don't be blaming the Lord. God said over by the prophet Isaiah, in fact, I think it's that same chapter that the prophets went through this morning, but Brad, I'll uh, bring you gold. Y'all hear this? You hear this? You've been judged, but I'll bring you go. Listen, you think you came out empty. That was for a reason, because God's doing a work in you now through Naomi. And listen, what she's bringing you, you already shared in one measure, and now she's bringing you what's bringing you into the very fullness of God. You see that? So Boaz has told her, don't go back empty, because he knows that she needs to be filled. I used the word on your handout, Wednesday, and it kind of needs to to be looked at a different way. And I thank Bishop Paul for this. I said, <clears throat> the, we looked at the number of man, which is six, and we looked at six, 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 and all that. Listen, I said a counterbalance. Listen, it's not so much a balancing, because that man, a uh, first man is done away with. Uh, it's like a replacement. This is, this is the new creation man. That old man has nothing to do in this what, where God is born. You understand that? But I was just showing you how that you look at the man, his number is six. See that? And here you have six measures. God has done it. The, this, this is a new creation man. You see what's new about us? Every step he went through, he brought us through it. You'll understand that better when we get, to, we get done with chapter 4. So when, when Ruth gets to Naomi and she asks the question, who art thou, daughter, who, my, who art thy daughter? Yeah, there's going to be a change in her. You can't carry this without being changed. Y'all hear God? You can't convey six, what six measures of barley speak to and yourself be the same. Y'all hear the Lord? Plus she's already spent the night. Listen, resting at his feet. There's no way you can change this. You can, I mean, carry this without yourself being changed and everybody you come in contact with is going to get the blessing of that. That's all it is to it. And I told you, and I'm so glad I don't have to worry about figuring this out anymore. You think I was doing something wrong. No, I'm still what you say. Then I came to understand something. Bishop Paul and I came to understand something. You're going to have to want this. you either Ruth or you Orpah. And that's the bottom line. Some people will try to come in here and they'll taste it. Look, but they, they just have to go back. Like, like, they, like many of the Hebrew children murmured in the garden. What happened to them? Their carcasses fell dead. They had to wait a whole generation except two people and raise up to bring into a promised land. You can't carry that in the, in the new creation, man. You understand this right here? Y'all see this right here? People think the same people that came out with the problem. No, they didn't. You better go read your Bible. The caucuses fell dead in the wilderness because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Don't forget that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So then, verse 18 of Ruth says, 
What Naomi tell her? Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall, what the outcome is going to be. Listen, listen to Naomi. Ruth is experiencing a change. And when she interacts with Naomi, you start to see a change too. Naomi doesn't put her to work. <clears throat> listen to what she says, family. This is how you're going to know a church from, I don't know what, the, the meeting group, okay? Listen. Listen to what she's going to say right here. Verse 18. Look, sit still, my daughter, until you know the outcome. Well, you're not going to go hungry. You've got the bread of life, all it speaks to, and you've got the full measure. So what you're going to sit, sit still until he, <laughs> his enemies, his footstool, they're your enemies under your feet at the same time. You understand? Right. See, see that right there? Look, she tells her to sit still. She doesn't come up with all this cumbering stuff for her. This is the, any church should be telling the people because what are we doing? Even Hebrew says that labor to enter into his rest. You see this? You should be bringing the people into rest. Look, just sit still. Sit still. How, why would, is it, is it because you tell her to sit still because she's been working in the field? No, no, this is coming from a different place. Hear the Lord. You hear this right here? Sit still. Sit still until you, until you know how the matter will fall, the outcome. Because listen, this man is not going to rest. You hear this? until he had finished the thing when? This day. That's why we ought to be resting. We're in his day. Who is he? Is the Christ. The day of the Lord. His day. What did he say? It is finished. It is finished. We talked a little bit about, we just kind of just briefly touched on that. When he, but way back when, when Boaz told her to open up that veil so he could put the measures in it. Christ was crucified when, when he died, what happened? That, that veil rent from the, the Bible said from top to bottom. You hear this? And you know what? It said after he was raised from the dead, people got up out of their graves and were seen walking in the city. Won't nobody believe God. People are playing with some things. Can't tell me because I've seen some things about people that transition. Don't play with me, buddy, because I'm telling you the truth. This is a whole different place, blessed be the name of the Lord. This is a place where Christ is all and in all. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Elder Williams, thinking about thinking about you, I appreciate your call the other day. It was just so precious and, and just so glorious. But I was thinking about your husband. And listen very carefully to this. The last exchange I had personally with Elder Williams' husband, um, he asked me this question. He said, I just want to be sure that I've got it right. For all you don't know, he's, he's transitioned. He said, I just want to be sure I got this right. Just a jovial, happy guy. And I, we had these steps on brochures in the, in the lobby. We're in another place then. And I said, brother, you don't even have to worry about it. I said, the Lord has already done this for us and as us. And I gave him one of the brochures that have these six steps on it. You know what? I'm going to tell you how grace will assure you. When her husband transitioned, I told you this already, it was black night, dark, dark. My husband sitting right there. You know we wouldn't lie to you. How about a flock of birds came in our backyard and they just carried on for just a little while, and then they flew away. Y'all hear this? I have a lot of exchange about birds in, in transit. But, okay, and you see what I'm saying? This is no joke, okay? This is no, this is no joke. You talking about having such a peace? Mm -hmm. Such a, such a peace? Glory to the name of the Lord. This is nothing to play, this is so powerful, family. Listen, I hope you just absorb it when you get quiet. Don't let, listen. We've come to a place now where what people call, um, let's see, what would they call this? Spooky. 
<laughs> Don't look at it like that. You coming now into your life. You look. I am crucified with Christ. Listen, yet I live. Listen, what's, what's death to the resurrection? Is my question. Go read about go read about Lazarus. That death is not in a language to the resurrection. The resurrection, the resurrection will call that sleep and can wake you out of it when he gets ready. You understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. We get used to things being in a certain realm. Listen, we're supposed to carry ourselves, not carry ourselves, but allow ourselves to be carried up and out of this realm. You notice John in the spirit, but he kept going on higher. Started out in the spirit, and then here comes the messenger, come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher. Like the Lord. Y'all have had these experiences. Like the Lord. He'll show you. He'll show you, and you'll know it's him. What in the world am I seeing green figs in the middle of a dry, I mean, brown grass patch, but it's the only green figs? Yes. Then I go to the Song of Songs, where it talks about the green figs. But you know, at the end of that was arise, my love, and come away with me. You can't stay here. You understand this right here? You can't stay in the flesh. You have to be allow him to carry you in the spirit. There's nothing for, for us to do but be sit still, okay? Let's just 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 sit, just sit still. I'm gonna read you two scriptures, three scriptures, and we're going home. Philippians 1 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you, what is gonna do? Complete it. Until, remember we dwell on until, until the day of Jesus Christ. We're in that day. See. Another thing people are kind of forgetting about, we actually, we don't look at natural times, but it's something to think about. Peter tells us a day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. We are, time-wise, if you look at the scriptures, entering the seventh day from Adam and the third day from Christ. Think about it. Now, here, go get you. You got plenty else now. You want to just let somebody step and tell you something and just swallow it down. Go look it up for yourself. Yeah, right. Look it up online. See if, if it won't tell you, it, it will let you know from Adam to Christ was 4,000 years and you, you moved, what, you, you over 2,000 years past that. So listen, we're talking about a day. People can, you can keep going in that, in that circle where you never break out of it. What you need is the Spirit of God to bear you on eagles' wings and take you out of it. You see that? Because religion is going to just keep you going round and round. You don't believe it? You don't believe it? Go back and look at, at, at some of these old movies about church history and see how stuff got started. Built on trying to ease pain from, from some kind of suffering. Didn't ask God. Just wanted people just wanted to be important and start. This group, then this group didn't like the way that group did it, so they started another one, and this one started another one. And God is so merciful; He'll visit His people when when we cry out to Him. But they'll take what the visitation did and camp around that you can't put God in no box. Somebody please hear the Lord. He can do whatever He wants. You can't capture this. You can't capture this in a denomination. You can't capture this in a meeting. We ought to just thank God for whatever it is that He wants to do when He wants to do it. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the scripture from Psalm 138. People used to say this a lot. And I used to wonder when they were going to let him do it. He said, the Lord will, will perfect that which concerns me. See, the, the word is complete. He'll complete that which concerns us. Yeah. If, if he's the author and the finisher, do you think what he offers and finishes is going to look like what we want it to look like. It's going to look like him. Like the song he many mentions, but he should fashion after our Lord. You hear this? Yes, Lord. See that? God bless you.